Salve, and welcome back to 15 with Fosca and to this very special episode dedicated to voting from abroad. If you're a U.S. citizen living abroad, you can vote, and this podcast gives you an easy, step-by-step, nonpartisan guide to what you need to do to cast your vote by Tuesday, November 5th. Whether you're a first-time voter, a seasoned one, or are voting from abroad for the very first time, stay right where you are to hear from today's special guests, Leani Reditti and Jane Zaloga, two volunteers for Democrats Abroad Central Italy. Every vote really counts, and here is everything you need to know to make sure that your voice is heard come November. Grazie mille e buon ascolto. Buongiorno mondo, and welcome back to 15 with Fosca, the podcast. I'm delighted to have two special guests with me today, Leoni Buditi and Jane Zaloga. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks it's for so having great us. to be here. Thanks are, for having us. I am so happy to be talking to you both today, and more specifically, about Democrats abroad. So, I thought we could just dive right in, and you could tell us what is Democrats Abroad and what each of you does for the organization. No problem. So I'm Leani and I am a teacher by heart and by training. So I'm just going to say that for you, those of you who are just checking in, I'm going to tell you the most important piece of information first, which is a website and it's votefromabroad.org. And that's what you need to vote. If you're an American living overseas, you go to that website and it holds your hand just like a good first grade teacher. It leads <laughs> you through the process because voting from abroad is simple but not easy. I would just say it's going to take about 10 or 15 minutes of your time. So votefromabroad.org is a nonpartisan platform that Democrats Abroad created to help everyone who's living anywhere overseas vote. Because just because you're far away doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a voice. So that's what Democrats Abroad does. It's just a way to bring people together and help you show that you still have an opinion. And it's really important to vote when you don't live in America because guess who doesn't get to vote? Everybody else that lives around you. And America has a big impact. It has a big footprint. And so if you know people that um, care about geopolitics or economics or what the Americans are going to do tourism-wise, all those things are important to the people you care about who can't vote. And so you should just vote for them. But you also might want to participate for your own self. So that's what Democrats Abroad is. So. That's a really good description. Oh, thanks. And what do you do specifically, Leani, for Democrats Abroad? So I moved back to Italy, short elevator speech. Mm-hmm. I moved back to Italy with my family three years ago. And my girlfriend in Switzerland, who's American, she said, you know you can still vote. And I said, no, what? What do you mean? I didn't know. Because oh, I was busy know. unpacking my suitcases and figuring out how to move a dog uh, over an ocean and children. And <laughs> right. I was busy. And she goes, no, no, you can still vote. And I said, uh, Really? She said, yeah, Democrats Abroad, go on the website and look. And so it was this moment for me. That's my origin story with Democrats Abroad. And it was so easy and so supportive and so helpful that there you go. I'm a Georgia voter. And so that year it was important and every year it was important. But, you know, I felt like I could participate because I felt a little guilty moving away from America, honestly, because I was like, oh, there's a lot of things that need to get fixed. Mm -hmm. And if I've moved away, not everybody can move away or should move away. So voting made me feel like I was still connected. So I am currently the chairperson of the central region for Democrats Abroad Italy because I'm a teacher. So when I show up to meetings, they're like, oh, you're kind and organized. Would you like to lead things? (laughs) So that's that's how that happened. I went to one meeting and I got nominated. Yeah, that's usually how it does happen. Exactly. But thankfully, Jane was there and she had already been working for Democrats Abroad, working, meaning volunteering. We are 100% volunteers. Everyone in the entire organization is is a volunteer. So Jane was already volunteering volunteering and she helped me get started so I'll let her introduce herself. Okay thanks Leonie. Um, So this is Jane and um, I'm a teacher as well but I teach at a university so um, I explain things and trying to be somewhat even in my explanations. So you asked about Democrats abroad and so I just want to make a distinction a little bit between Democrats abroad and vote from abroad. Okay. Okay because Democrats abroad is quite honestly part of the Democratic Party. And so there's that part, which is basically pulling people together who are somewhat like-minded and who are interested in supporting um, the ideas that um, they feel are important that the Democratic Party in some way, in some part of the Democratic Party, expresses their their opinions. Um, But then vote from abroad, which is, um, let's say, it's sponsored by by Democrats abroad, 
it is and it has to be, as Leonie pointed out, it absolutely has to be nonpartisan because any effort to get people to vote has to be nonpartisan. So this is a platform that is really intended to encourage people to vote, and obviously it will register people who are Democrats, but people who are independents, people who are Republicans, and it is just trying to get as many people as possible to actually be involved. Okay. And so both of us work very much on that. Um, I specifically have been working lately on trying to inform a lot of the universities in Florence, because yeah. Florence has a huge footprint in terms of study abroad, mm -hmm. trying to inform a lot of the universities about how their students who will be coming in the fall, how they can vote, because for them it's even more, I think, significant because the students have never voted before. It's their first You know, they're time. coming and they're 18, 19, 20 years old. Yeah. They've never really had a chance to vote before, and so sometimes they just kind of, you know think, oh, well, I'm abroad, I don't have to worry about it, I'm not going to do it, but they can, and they, it's really important, I think, it's part of their education also, especially because they're living here in a foreign country, to realize how much um, their vote in the United States really matters. It matters for them once they get back to the United States, but hopefully when they're here, they also see how much that vote matters in the rest of the world, too. Absolutely. And so I think both of us, we're very conscious of trying to make sure that we can reach that audience. But then another thing that's really important, I think, is that the people like all of us, you, Leon, and me, who live here all the time. Exactly. Um, that we remember that we vote. And so as Lani said, she didn't know that she could. Right. And I think a lot of people don't know that they can. Um, and every American has the right to vote. Exactly. And so, you know, I've been a long-term resident like you, Jane. Jane mm -hmm. and I have known each other for a long, long time, and I've never missed an election. And I also have to say, I know a lot of it depends on your state, so I hope that maybe both of you or one of you will speak to that in a second as well. Mm -hmm. For example, I vote in New Jersey, and it's super easy because I can vote online, but I know that other states aren't that easy. So we're going to put a lot of information in the show notes but can you both sort of tell us now what are there important dates that we should be keeping in mind? Are there certain states that you, you know, recommend maybe, I don't know, earlier is better, you know, in terms of can you just give us some general advice, whether it be for those first-time voters or maybe people who have just moved abroad and like you, Leonie, as Jane mentioned, maybe just don't know that this is an option. Sure. Well, I'll take a crack at it and okay. then Jane will fill in Thank the you. other details. So. What's really nice is that there is a law, it's called UACAVA, there's no test on that, but it protects the vote for soldiers and any American living overseas. And because of this law, every state has to send their ballots electronically by September 21st. So if you request your ballot before then, you will get an email from your local election officer back in the United States. So not snail mail, because we all know living overseas, snail mail can be very problematic. So they have to send it to you electronically, and that's the beauty of using the votefromabroad.org website, because you go through the process, you request it, and then they, they email it to you. Now, every state's different. Exactly. My state, Georgia, I have to then physically print out a piece of paper, and I have to physically return that ballot. But there are different ways to do that. And at least the ballot coming to me comes electronically. In other states, you can then vote by email. So those right. are the two big differences. So as far as dates go, I would say you definitely want to request your ballot before September 21st, because that's when they're going to start coming to you. And then you have time to get the ballot back. Because okay. it's, a, it's a dance step. It's a request and then a return. Okay. I have two quick follow-up yes. questions, and then we'll turn it over yeah. to James. So you mentioned that there are various options to mail it back. Am mm -hmm. I right in recalling that maybe they can be dropped off at the U.S. consulate if or something? You, yes. Okay. If you have a stamp, though, and it has to be a United States stamp. So if you're in the Florence area, I have hundreds and hundreds of stamps that I will sell you. I can't give them to you, but I have a lot of U.S. stamps because the way that the diplomatic pouch works is that mm -hmm. you go to the consulate and you put your mail in, but once it gets to the United States, it gets dumped into the United States mail. And so if it doesn't have a stamp, it won't get there. Okay. But you can either have a stamp in your pocket from your last trip to the United States, or you can somehow find a stamp. So that is definitely an option. Okay. You can also use Italian mail. You can use FedEx, DHL, any of those. Okay. Those are more expensive. Right. But that is can but be tracked also, and traced. Exactly. 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 So those are all options. And if you get your ballot ahead of time and you're confident that the Italian mail system will work and maybe you want to do a recommendata, that can also work. So okay. there's lots of different options. 
Follow, another follow-up question. So I'm thinking, as Jane mentioned, there's such a big U.S. Um, university student population here in Florence. And um, if somebody is in Florence now and they have not yet registered in their state, what options do they have? Like, can they just, can they, can, this might be a dumb question, maybe you said it already, but like, if I have never registered to vote, can I register now from yeah. abroad? There are actually, there are kind of four steps okay. that have to happen. Okay. The first thing you have to do is you have to register. And living abroad, many states, they don't make you necessarily re-register, but some states do. Okay. You, every year if you live abroad, so for this is for the people who live here all the time, mm -hmm. every year if you live abroad, you have to request a ballot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the two steps. First, registering. Second, requesting the ballot. Okay. Okay, and those are two things that you can do with the process that Leani said. Okay. If you go on the website, votefromabroad.org, uh, vote they walk you, choose your state, and then they walk you through the process of what you need to do for your state. Because one of the things that's important to remember is that in voting in the United States, the federal government honestly has nothing to do with it. You vote in your state. Exactly. And I think a lot of people forget that, mm -hmm. is it is the state that decides what the laws are, what the rules are, and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So number one, you register. Number two, you request. And then if you request, and this goes along with Leanna, what you were saying, you in order to get your ballot electronically back to you by September 21st, you have to, when you request your ballot, you have to tell them that you want it electronically. Got it. Okay. Because it's not automatic. They can still send it in the mail, which mm -hmm. means that you're going to get it on November 10th, and the election is November right. 5th. So you have to request it electronically. And then September 21st, you basically get your ballot in your mail, and so you get a link, you get the actual ballot. Okay. I vote in Massachusetts, so they just send me the ballot. Same with New Jersey. It's and so it, it's very okay. easy in Same. that regard. And then the fourth thing, and that's the important thing, is you have to send it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so that's where it gets complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because some states do request that you still put it in the mail. In the Again, in the case of Massachusetts, I just email it to mm -hmm. my local election person, and I have to sign a document that says, okay, I know that my vote is no longer anonymous. Same. Um, but, you know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so you have to get it back in. And so Leone okay. described the different ways that you can do that. Something I'm really interested in is what you, what Democrats abroad, vote from abroad, what you do to help people while this is happening. So between September 21st and Election Day, Will you be around, and what will you be doing? You talked about holding hands, Leoni. Absolutely. I'm as good a, at that a good, as a first-grade teacher. teacher. Exactly. So can you speak a bit to how you will be helping citizens living abroad through these couple of very hot months this fall? Absolutely. So you can always reach out to us through the website and find us. Our emails are there, and we are available. We are going to have pop-up voter assistance booths set up throughout Florence. Nice. So we already have confirmed at the Shake Cafe on Via Cavour. Come find us. It's very nice. We're going to we're gonna have a presence there, and we're going to be in lots of other places. We're going to do a lot of events, so you can come to an event. I'm personally dreaming of Taco Tuesday because I know that I miss Mexican food, but we might just do pizza. So well, we're going to have Leonie, a lot of... Yes. I might be able to make you happy. Oh, that I, would be so I've nice. I've been talking on the podcast a lot lately about how we met, we're, we're missing a good Mexican restaurant mm -hmm. here. But um, I did think you know they that do a Taco Tuesday thing by the Porta Prato. There, there are a couple of new Mexican places, but also did you know that Mela Luca is doing a taco oh, pop-up? There you go. And so we could talk about it, mm -hmm. maybe. We can have with Chloe and exactly. see if we could maybe do a democracy tacos. and Dem tacos. Democracy and tacos <laughs> sounds very nice. So we'll be around. <laughs> I'll be there. Okay, good. I'll be there for sure. Um, and, you know, you also, we, we keep talking about the large U.S. student community. So will you also be on site at some of the programs? You'll be, because some of the programs are really big. Absolutely. These kids are voting for the first time. Exactly. Right? We're going to so, be either at whichever university will have us or near whichever university <laughs> will let us be near them. And we're going to do more pop-up stands there. We're also doing outreach in Bologna, in Lucca. In Siena, wow. in 
um, I think everywhere that's... that will take us, basically. So we're really trying to get the footprint all over Tuscany that's because wonderful. there are both expats living in those places and students. But one of the things that's also important, I think, is that we're saying we're going to be there, but anybody can help anybody else. That was my next so, question. So if you know how to do it, or if you can navigate the website, mm -hmm. you can help somebody else. And so that's one of the things that we also think is really important, is you take five of your closest friends and sit down one day and register to vote, yeah. request your ballot, and then on September 21st when it comes, then take your ballot, and because you'll all have different ballots depending right. on where you're voting from, Obviously. you know, vote your ballot. Um, and that's another thing that I just want to mention really briefly about how your ballot is different. Okay. Because one of the things that happens is when you're registering to vote as somebody who lives overseas, and this, by the way, is a really important point, and I keep emphasizing this in everything that I say about this, is you can vote as an absentee voter. Right. And so I think for students, for instance, exactly. many of them might have already registered to vote. And they just say, okay, well, my mom will send me my ballot but then you're still relying on this other thing. But if you vote specifically as an overseas voter, voter. and there's actually a form that you mm -hmm. have to fill out in order to do this, and we can talk about that later, but the if you register as an overseas voter, what that means is that you're guaranteed to get the ballot, as Leonie said, on the 21st, which not everybody else in the United States is guaranteed to get that, That's by right. the way. Mm -hmm. So an overseas voter does. And then some of the states also will give you extra time to get it in, recognizing that the mail service is slow. So maybe it has to be postmarked by November 5th, okay. but it can arrive a few days later still. Depending on the state. De depending on the state. So again, every state is different in that regard. But everybody is guaranteed to get what they call a federal write-in absentee ballot okay. if you are voting from abroad. And what that means, if by chance, you didn't get your ballot. If by chance you've checked with your local election official and they say, no, we haven't received your ballot yet, you can download this write-in ballot okay. and then you send that one back too. And so basically, you know, you think, oh, well, I'm sending in two ballots. This is completely illegal. Your local election officer is going to wind up checking and is going to just use one of those. Okay. And so that's something that if you're just doing absentee, you don't get that option. Okay. So if they don't get your ballot, they don't get your ballot, and that's the end of the day. Wow. But this gives you a chance to have another opportunity, and so that's really important. It is important. It's fundamental. And I want to just clarify Thank one you, thing. Danny. If you it's September 22nd or yeah. September 25th, you can still go through this process. That's just the earliest that the state election mm -hmm. officials are required to send you your ballot via email, but you can still do this process. All After through, that, all, all through, exactly. up, in, to, up until election day, I'm you can you do that. that. So yeah. I don't want you to be listening oh, to yeah, this podcast, you know, going through your feed, and you know that Fosca <laughs> is the person that you listen to when you're driving because it keeps you relaxed. Instead of <laughs> when you get to the tonda, you want to <laughs> commit some sort of aggressive act. <laughs> and so here you are, and it's October, and you think, oh, no, I missed it. You can go ahead and vote. Up until election day, you can go through this process, and they will email you your ballot. Sooner is better, but Obviously. there isn't, you know, I would say December, it's too late. Yeah, there are actually That's a joke. Well, no, <laughs> elections in November. Late. There yeah. actually are some <laughs> states, though, that allow you to register online and allow you to request your ballot. And then theoretically, I don't know when they actually send it once right. you've done that, but almost up until election mm -hmm. day. Yeah. Exactly. And so then you don't email it back. So, right. yeah, you don't give up. Um, but it depends on the state. It really varies so much state to state. And I had no idea until I realized how easy it was for me to vote. And when I was still working at Stanford, a lot of our students had some difficulties, mm -hmm. you know, either because they were first-time voters or because their states right. had more stringent whatever exactly. about, you know, mailing back in, things like exactly. that. So I think the important thing is being very ready, you know, by September 21, realizing, though, that we do have, thankfully, October, you know, right. a nice long month, and to get, to get our votes in, okay? Yeah, I think it's important to have a plan is what it is, right. is to have a plan. So to, to try, if it's possible, to get yourself organized before September 21st so you get your ballot. But even if you don't, you miss it, that's fine. But if you have to, if you live in a state where you have to send your ballot back by mail, that you do, and some states, you know, like New York, you still have to send it in by mail. And you have to do some fancy origami folding of the envelope, <laughs> which always confuses people. 
And so maybe we can have an origami day where we just learn <laughs> how to fold. fold. Exactly. All fold our we all fold our ballots to together. To the, are there other but, states that, like besides New York that have that are that difficult that you remember sort of off the There table? are almost I think it's almost half. I think almost 21 states because I went through a little list the other day. Okay. About 21 states require that you send your ballot in by mail. Wow. That's a lot. I thought it was for some reason I thought it was only a few. Uh -huh. No. You can register. Only a couple of states require that you actually send in your registration request by mail. I think there are two states okay. that do that. Um, one, I think, is Arkansas or Alabama. I can't remember. It's okay. one of the A states. Um, and the other one is South Dakota, I think. But the rest of them, um, you can request it electronically or by fax. And fax is another tricky thing hmm. because, again, students, I don't know. Jack, do you know about a fax? We have a student no, intern no. here with us. Do you know? Do you, have you ever used a fax machine? Oh, yes, I have. You have? Oh. Okay. Congratulations. Because, <laughs> I know. Sometimes the fax machine is just like, but I, wouldn't I don't know, know what that is. But I would one right now. Exactly. So that's hard. So some states you can mail it in or fax it in. Huh. And f for me, I know what a fax machine is. Sure you do. <laughs> I actually even know that I can have an app on my phone that lets me fax something in. Wow. But not everybody knows that. Okay. And so, you know, that fax thing sometimes freaks people out a little bit. Right. Um, but just know that, you know, that's another option that you can do that. Okay. Now, what if what is the advice you would give somebody? Um, you mentioned a plan, Jane. Mm -hmm. And what what would that, for example, let's look at a student who's abroad right now, in September, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. got here, you know, just starting their their semester abroad. What should their plan be? I I think their plan should be in that month of September to get themselves registered and requested okay. of the ballot. Then. Theoretically, if they haven't gotten something by October 4th, um, they can go ahead and get themselves the write-in ballot. That what okay. It's called a FWAB, which is a very unfortunate name. So a federal write-in ballot. Okay. Get themselves a FWAB. If their state demands that they send it in by mail, they really should get it in the mail, ideally by the middle of October. Mm. As soon as possible. Yeah. But I what mean. I would say to students, the simple version is go to votefromabroad.org. You've heard that me say that, votefromabroad.org, the website, which will be in the show notes. Right. And you should follow the process, request your ballot. As soon as you get it, this is the non-procrastination thing. As soon as you get it, figure out how to send it back. And just then check it off and know that you've done your part. And that's the simple version. And there is a help feature in when you're inside mm. the website. There are, there are There are people that will help you live. And so you can always reach out and get help from the support staff that's there. So if you run into a problem, you can contact somebody and get help, or you can talk mm -hmm. to us. So I have a little pitch. Can I do a little pitch? You can do Okay, here's my pitch. So we're want. pretty nice and you're funny. Very, you're both and, very nice and, and very funny. And, and, I'm vouching for the okay, two good. of you. So here's the thing. Like, sometimes people get sad and depressed because they read the news. And anger turned inward becomes depression mm -hmm. and I'm probably not the only one that sometimes gets sad and maybe gets depressed and mm -hmm. what has helped me the most is to take an action to do something because I can't fix it all by myself but I can try and all of us pushing in the same direction can help and so maybe you want to make some friends who are cool like us join Democrats Abroad Italy so you can just go on the website and you can find us because we have a lot of events and we try and keep it positive We're not stupid. We know there are things going on We know it's hard and it's tough and I have a whole list of reasons why I moved to Italy because my daughters were crying themselves to sleep because they were afraid to be shot at school Okay, so I know there are yeah. realities and a lot of other reasons But if you want to be part of something positive to take a step to take an action to do something you can also give us money so you can donate to Democrats Abroad because all of the money goes to really, really like simple things like pr printing flyers and doing online outreach. So your money will go really far. And if you can't donate money, then come to an event and get involved. And, you know, that's a way that you can take an action in addition to voting. The most important thing is to vote and get all your friends to vote. Really, like, the positive peer pressure of calling all your friends and being like, come on, just do it. Just, just vote. Just don't, no excuses. Just vote. And then beyond getting your friends to vote, come join us and do something. Okay. I was actually going to ask you about that. So if people, for example, do you need volunteers? Do you need money? Not you personally. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, <laughs> all this we can always all money. We can always <laughs> money. Um, but in other words, if people want to lend a hand, they can, you know, reach out to you, look at the website, show up at the events, whatever. But again, the most important thing, this election is huge. 
Um, and every vote does count. I think sometimes I really appreciate what you said um, because I think it is hard. And I think sometimes we do tend to get a little depressed, especially when we're living far away from the states. And, you know, the, it's a lot. There's a lot of news. There's a lot of stuff coming in. And you tend to feel powerless. And I, I think the important takeaway um, in this podcast is that we aren't powerless. And that having something like Democrats Abroad here is so fundamental for us to be able to express um, our opinion, to you know, make our vote count. And I think we tend to have, I've heard a lot of people say this, and I hate to say this here, but I'm going to say it. I have friends here, people I know who live here, and they don't vote. And say things like, oh, but you know, I live in wherever. So my vote doesn't really matter. And I'm Jane, you're I'm so glad that you're gonna answer this because our votes do count. Our votes do count. Thank our you. votes do count numerically. Yes. Um, it is, however, sad to say that the last meeting I went to, there was a representative who deals with um, uh, Americans abroad voting, and he said that statistically, it's hard to measure how many Americans actually live abroad. Okay. But he said statistically about 4% of Americans who are eligible to vote from abroad vote. What? Which is shocking. So, it's important to vote from abroad because, yes, you're invested, you've got family at home, there are issues that come up. I know for a long time I didn't vote because I thought, well, you know, I don't live there, I really shouldn't have a say in what goes on, etc. But I am obligated as an American to report my taxes mm -hmm. in the United States. Right. If I am obligated for tax purposes to be beholden to the United States, I have a right to vote in the United States. Yeah. I might not have a right to vote for everybody in the state that I vote in, which I don't in Massachusetts. I can vote for the president. I can vote for the senators. Mm -hmm. I can vote for my representative in the House of Representatives. And different states have different rules in that regard. But that's important that I can do that. The other thing is that I think we sometimes forget that those people that we're electing to those offices or that are being elected by other people, they don't care about us. Because if we don't let them know that we exist, yeah. they don't care. I went to another meeting where there was um, a representative from Nevada, Dina Titus, who has just now sponsored another bill to make people in Congress aware of the needs of people who live abroad. <laughs> because she's just like, I had no idea. I had no idea that you had this obligation to report all, you know, all of your income and deal with the taxes and all that kind of stuff. I had no idea that you had to fill out that FACA form. I had no idea because people who live in the United States have don't no know. idea. They yeah. don't know. Right. And so the people who are in Congress don't know unless somebody tells them. Mm -hmm. And so it's up to us to tell them. And so it's, you know, sometimes, yes, a lot of people who live abroad get excited about the taxes and all that kind of stuff, which it's hard to get a bank account sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, because we're Americans right. living abroad. Right. Yes, you have to report all of your income. It also affects people who are on Social Security, because if you've earned income in another place, there are laws in the United States right. through the Social Security system that is going to reduce what you would be getting in your Social Security. There are bilateral agreements. Exactly. There are things you need to, I mean, you and are invested. There's, are there's invested. all of that that's personal, yeah. financial. Right. But there's also just the fact that we live in the world. Yeah. And I think for us who live abroad, we're yeah. really kind of aware of the fact that, you know, decisions about NATO, that, that's important for us living here in Europe. Absolutely. And so we want people to kind of be thinking about also the bigger picture. Yeah. That number is shocking to me. That 4% blows me away. I, I don't, I have no, I, I don't know much about it, but my goodness, I thought it would have been much higher because I've always felt, I mean, I don't know about the two of you, but I mean, I, st I feel very American. I feel very invested in our political system. I, just what mm -hmm. you were saying before, you know, I, I, comply, I do everything I'm supposed to do. So I do feel like I have a say in things. Right. And I it's hard for me to understand why people wouldn't want to. It's our it's a democratic right. It's something maybe I'm innocent and I still are or naive, but I still believe that's so important. You know, that that it's such a it's something that we have that gives us power. And you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm really glad you brought up the fact that it's not something a lot of people have on their radar, but there are a lot of us living abroad, mm -hmm. whether it be Absolutely. permanently, you know, like the three of us, or whether it be because they're 
mil active military, right. whether they're students, whether they're people who are, have just been, maybe have to come here and work for a year or two. So this is a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so the votes really do count. So, Leonie, you you look like you're you're wanting to thank you. Say no, something I was again. saying that for selfish reasons, if you want representation, you have to vote because it just like Jane said, it, they don't care about us unless we vote. Because you know what they care about? They care about holding the Senate. So you, there were more votes from abroad than the margin of error for the Senate in Georgia. So basically, people overseas, enough Georgia voters living abroad voted that it held the Senate wow. of the United States. That's important. So and you know what? Know. Now they pay attention. Yeah. They pay attention. They're starting to pay attention, they being the politicians in America, because enough of us in Georgia living overseas voted in the Senate race and held the Senate. That's power. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So especially if you live in a, in a state that's sort of, they say, up for grabs, it is critical, critical that you vote because you might be the person and then all of your friends that turns this vote because it's probably going to be down to the wire. And if you live in a state where you feel like it doesn't matter, it still matters because if you show up and the numbers are there, then when we go knock on the door in Washington, D.C. and say, hey, do you know our taxes are kind of messed up and it's really hard for us? Do you think you could help us out? They would, they would look at the numbers and they say, oh, wow, that's like a whole constituency of people that we would like to have, have on our side. So do it for selfish reasons, but also do it to save the future of the world. <laughs> no, no, pressure. No, no, pressure. no pressure. No pressure. So I want to talk about young people for a second. Um, first time voters in this particular historical moment in which we find ourselves. What do you think? Just this is sort of not a professional opinion. I'm just curious. How do you think young people? How do you see young people responding to this election, the upcoming election? So the one that lives in my house. So yeah, I have a I know new, you I have a, a new I voter. Have a new I voter. have a new voter. She yes. turns she's just turning 18, so she gets to vote. And just as a technical, I'm not answering your question, but I will. I know you Technically, will. she puts the last address where she lived in the United States. So she's a first-time voter living overseas, but she still gets to vote where she lived the last time. Mm -hmm. And if you've never lived in the United States, you get to Definitely put your better. parents' address. Okay. Okay. So in the United States. So don't think, you know, don't worry. You can still vote as an American citizen. What do I think about the young people? I think that they are incredibly passionate and frustrated. And I think that they will show up because okay. they are maybe a little bit frustrated with those of us who didn't fix things. And maybe we made things worse, maybe. And so that they, I think, are going to show didn't. up. Leonie, we didn't. No, well, you I know, mean, our gen you know, we, we tried. We tried. We tried, but we didn't try hard enough. I feel like is the attitude for the young people in my household. They say you, you, you should have done more, and now we are here. And so I really believe that the young people are going to show up because I think it's now been made personal. So there are so many issues from healthcare for women to gun violence to the climate. The climate is the biggest one because you know if it. If we don't have a livable climate, they're not going to be able to live yeah. in the climate. Yeah. It seems kind of obvious <laughs> no, to, to a lot of people. I so um, I think there's a lot of talking bad about young people. Oh, they don't care. They're checked out. They don't, they, they're not interested. I think that living through COVID, I think they realize that anything is possible hmm. because, you know, we, you have to go to school or not. You know, yeah. things have to happen or not. And so, since that, that new possibility of when you need to, things can change, I think that that empowers them to realize that you really, really can make fundamental change when people make a decision. Okay. So I have very, I have high hopes have high and hopes. faith in the young people. Absolutely. Okay. Jane? Yeah, no, I, I, I would agree. I think um, that just seeing what's going on in the United States at the moment mm -hmm is there are a lot of young people who are expressing very, um, very strong opinions about political events, yeah. world events. Exactly. And I think um, it's important that those views get to be expressed. Yeah. Um, I think it's also important that we somehow try to have some kind of a dialogue with regard to those things, yeah. because just shouting over each other is not going to solve any problem whatsoever. Yeah. And so I think the process of voting at least allows you to use your voice in a way that even if in some way fundamentally you think it's just that one vote, it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. Sometimes, Leonie, as you said, is that one vote really does matter. Yeah. 
and it matters in a really big way for so many decisions that are like on the table right now mm -hmm. about gender issues, about women's right, about health care, about all kinds of things that really are affecting the long term of what life is like for people, especially in the United States. Exactly. And so I think people, you know, it, it behooves them to to vote. To, to vote. Yeah. To and express I'm, their opinions. I'm really glad both of you um, spoke to this because I, I do think this generation gets um, a bad rap and I think we've seen that they are very passionate about things. And I do think there's something incredibly empowering about voting. Um, and just the, the simple act of, of voting is fundamental. It, it doesn't mean, unfortunately, that things will change or that will, they'll change overnight, but you're showing that you have, that you care, you know, and you're showing that you, you want a better future. You want, you're making choices. And it seems to be at least, you know, looking at our children, looking at young people, our students, it's an incredible time of turmoil. And I think something, you know, we, the democratic process, you know, is, is so precious. Mm -hmm. and, and we really need to hold on to that. And so anything that can be done to ensure that you know, regardless of where you are, your age, your political affiliation, you're getting out there and making a difference. I, I really think it's important. And another thing I would ask you is, I know that we're talking about Democrats abroad today, but are there things that you would recommend people in, who are still in the U.S. do? In other words, how there's, you know, people can go canvas, they can get people, you know, to, to get out there and help. So do you have any recommendations also for, you know, just people who want to get involved, involved stateside? For me, the most powerful thing you can do is talk to the people that you know in your own social footprint, whether it's online, but even better, the people you see all the time. Because I think sometimes we're embarrassed to talk about politics. It's, you know, it's like one of those things like you don't talk about religion or politics. You know, you don't want to offend anybody. You don't want to get in their business. But I feel like it's urgent enough. And politics really is an expression of your values. And if you feel passionate about it, I feel like the most important thing you can do is talk to the people that you know and just get them out of that complacency because there's such a sense of it doesn't matter and you know just don't bother me with that so I would say with your own footprint and then if you want to get involved there are so many different organizations that you can get involved in and you just look and they're everywhere and you know but again really it's about relationships because democracy is about talking through our issues because there aren't ever we're not ever all going to agree, so we need a structure to figure out what we're going to do. And that's what this is about, because really, somebody said, I can't remember who it was, but it's like when the talking breaks down, that's when the violence starts. Yeah. So democracy is about talking, and it can be so frustrating because we all don't agree immediately. But this is our structure for working things out, and as Americans, we've decided that this is the best structure we've got for now, mm -hmm. and it's better than a lot of other structures. And I've become... I've always been patriotic and a huge fan of, I'm like very proud to be an American, yeah. but I feel like since I own it, I also get to criticize it because, you know, it's mine. And living overseas, I'm even more passionate about it because yeah. there's one thing that I noticed that Americans have is that we are genuinely, we think that we can do something better. We can fix it. We can help. We can change. And part of the reason that Americans are kind of sad right now is that I feel like we all feel like this is not us. Yeah. on all sides of the spectrum. Like, this is not us, the contra the conflict that's going on mm -hmm. and the lack of sort of um, constructive behavior is, I guess, what I would call it as yeah. a teacher. Mm -hmm. This is not us. We know this is not us. And yeah. some other cultures, the idea is like, eh, what are you going to do? Forget it. And you look inward. Whereas Americans, generally, we want things to get better. Yeah. If, if I could just add one thing to that. Um, I think another thing is what people at home can do, but also another thing that we can do is voting is absolutely fundamental. Yeah. But another thing that I think think we sometimes forget, and this kind of goes along with talking to people, is to write to people, to write to your representative, to write to your senator, to say, this is what I want. This is what I disagree with. Please vote for this measure. Mm -hmm. And so unless we actually tell them what we want, and they have staff, all of those interns who are running around Washington, you know, part of their job is to That's read right. the mail. They yeah. have to read it. Yeah. And so rather than just putting, you know, a, a comment on a news article or something that, mm -hmm. you know, just maybe 
makes you feel better momentarily. It but doesn't, it doesn't solve do anything. anything. It, it doesn't, doesn't it does exactly. It doesn't okay. do anything. Yeah. And so if you write to the person who actually has the power to do something, so remembering that the right to vote is fundamental, but then the right to communicate what you want that voted official to do is also really important. Right. And these are our rights, okay, mm-hmm. as citizens, and we should take advantage of them. Yeah. Is there something else you wanted to say, Jane, about that? No, I just say, well, the, another thing kind of going along with just communicating with people and talking to mm-hmm. people is, again, related to here, is that, you know, all of our Italian friends, they obviously can't vote, et cetera, in the United States, but they know other Americans. Exactly. And so by, you know, just reminding them to remind their other friends that they can work. So just working the network that we have okay. and trying to get as many people as possible aware because, you know, there are also people who've just lived here for so long that they are just so deeply embedded in Italian society that even though they are still American, they really don't participate that much. Or they don't want to. There's that want other to. thing. Well, you know, there exactly. are people who I think now that now that I'm thinking a little more about the four percent, mm-hmm. it actually makes sense to me. Oh yeah. Because there's definitely a large, I would imagine a fairly large percentage of expats all over the world. We're looking at all over the world who are who left the US for a reason right. and probably could care less. Right? Right. Um but and then there are accidental Americans you know, who were born in the United States and, no, you know, their right. parents just happen to be there on exactly. a work assignment and so they're American, but, but they, they have no, they have no, no relationship. Connection. They can vote if they want to, but most of them don't. Right, because they probably, well, I don't know. And that's where I appeal to those people to think about the impact that America has overseas, which is huge because of its military econo- mm-hmm. and economic power. And it makes a difference. What America does makes a giant difference you- to almost... I mean, everywhere. Right. It's we're a global it's, power. It still makes a difference. It I does. think that's I think that's an important thing to underline, and that we, you know, you said something earlier, Leonie, which I can't stop thinking about, which is that we don't talk about politics. It's one of those taboo things like money, sex, you know, things and like now that. Now it's gotten even more so, <laughs> and it's more so because there's so, you know, there's a lot of hard hate. feelings. There's a lot hard of, feelings. Yeah, and 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 so I do think that people are very reluctant to speak about their politics. Mm -hmm. And if anything, what I would like to come out from the podcast today is that let's put that aside and let's just go and and vote. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to, it may, I don't know about the two of you, but it always makes me feel better when I vote. Absolutely. You know, Mm -hmm. I feel like I've, you know, I've actually contributed. Contributed, exactly, done something. Done something. And, And I think we all feel so powerless right now. I don't know. I, I don't yeah, and, and that's kind of why I got involved in Democrats yeah. Abroad in the first place, yeah. is that I just kind of got tired of of lamenting, <laughs> of just feeling bad and thinking, you know, everything is horrible. And I was like, I have to do something. Yeah. I have to try to do something. Right. And so I think, you know, we're not asking necessarily that everybody get completely politically active, but that one action of voting at least do that. And I think it is I think it is fundamental now. And as we're sort of coming to the end of our conversation, I, I want to underscore that um, the sense of powerlessness that seems very pervasive, especially among young people, um, you know, yes, a vote is not going to solve everything. But it is, as you know, as we've been saying, it's a step toward something better, right, on the one hand. It's your civic duty. It's a right that you have, and so you should absolutely be taking advantage of it. I always say, you know what? I vote so that I can complain about things. I joke about it, Mm -hmm. but kind of yes and no. I pay taxes. I vote. There. You know? So... um, But think of any time that things have changed in, in human history. It's been a group of people that have gotten together to put their voices together. So if the one individual didn't show up, it probably would have still happened. But if all the individuals didn't show up, it wouldn't have happened. So you can be part of a group to stand up for something that's important to you because all throughout history that's how that's how humans work so when enough of us enough of us get together and push in the same direction then change happens exactly. and so you can choose to sit back and just say eh forget it or you can get involved and it really will make you feel better to get involved it really will yeah. and you'll make some new friends which is not terrible which is always nice <laughs> and um, and i think also this 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 what you just said is super important you know we really need community now more than ever we need to help mm-hmm. each other now more than ever. We need to join forces and collectively move forward to try to ensure that change happens. Right. And one of the best ways we can do that is by voting this 
year. So great. Thank you both. I've loved having you on the podcast. Is there anything else that you want to add? Some final comments? Just anything else that we're going to put all the information in the show notes and Jane and Leon, you're happy to hear from you. Um, but is there anything else that you want our listeners um, to hear or to know before we close for today? Votefromabroad.org. Votefromabroad.org. That's the website. That's what you should tell all your friends. And please come join us because we have a lot of fun and we get some positive work done and we're pushing in the same direction. Yeah, I would agree. So thank you very Thanks, much, Fosca. Fosca. This is great. Thank you both. Votefromabroad.org. Grazie mille. Alla prossima Thanks. Thank you once again for tuning in to this week's episode of 15 with Fosca and for continuing to do so. Grazie mille e alla prossima volta.